Now I'm going to go ahead and post a link on the chat box that I want you guys to click on because we're going to talk a little bit about concept mapping and this is a great page for you to kind of go back to later because I'm not going to show you the three minute video, although I highly recommend you use it. But as in the graduate level, you're going to be doing a lot of research as you've probably figured out already and concept mapping is an amazing kind of simple idea of getting all of your research together. Um, I will tell you, I majored in library science and I double majored in archaeology. So I got two master's degrees at the same time. So you can imagine that my master's thesis was ginormous and incredibly boring. But I used concept mapping in terms of trying to, to keep my ideas simple. So because we always want to start broad, especially with American higher education, my goodness, you, there, there's like a million topics you can write about. And so when you're starting to think about your master's thesis and you're starting to think about your, um, your projects and your papers, I, I think we just naturally want to freak out and think huge and, and then we get frustrated and we don't know where to start. But what I like about concept mapping is that it's kind of simple. Um, oh, okay. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Philip. Sorry. Let me resend that link. I think I did just send it to Anthony. My bad. Let me try one more time. Okay, you guys should all get it. Perfect. So go back later and look at the video. But basically what I want you guys to check out is the handouts that are underneath that link. So there's an example which you can print out and use on your own when you go home or when you start any research project. And then there's just kind of the basic PDF of what concept mapping is. And so essentially what this is, is this you're putting your topic or main idea in the middle then you're kind of branching out into a related issue and to a detail and example. And, and how I use it is that I think in terms of keywords, like how many of us have gone to Google, we've typed in our thesis statement, we click search and we hope that five or six articles will magically appear that absolutely just pertain to that thesis statement. Not many, that, that rarely if ever happens. And so what concept mapping does is that you can literally put your thesis statement in the middle and then you can start thinking about keywords that best describe what that thesis statement is going to be about. So, I mean, you can break it down by taking words out of that thesis statement. Um, research is all about finding several different ways to say the same thing, because very rarely are you able to just do a search and find a bunch of resources that you're looking for. So keep this in mind when we are actually going into the search, where I'm showing you all the databases and we're, we're all searching together using our keywords or our thesis statements. Um, but keep this page in mind, use the handouts. If you're a techie person like me, there's a lot of great software out there for concept mapping that's free, like MindMaple. And it's actually really good for organization too, because I'm like you guys, I have a full-time job, I have children. Um, thankfully, I'm not going back to school, but I work in a school. <laughs> so I have to use concept mapping just for organization, especially with a lot of the stuff that I do. So you'll find that it actually applies to children's chores or husband and wife chores, um, and as well as research. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Um, and it definitely takes the stress and the anxiety out of working on a main project because it breaks it down into tiny sections. And we all know it, it, we can do, it's like the Dave Ramsey philosophy, you know, pay off the smallest bill, do the smallest project, feel good about yourself, move on to the next big one. Um, research is the same way. Just take it slowly, one step at a time. And also, just FYI, pick something that you're interested in because there's nothing worse than having to write a 300-page paper about the most boring topic you could possibly imagine. And with what you guys are majoring in, there's a lot of fascinating stuff out there. So definitely choose something that you would be interested in. So with that being said, um, one of the, the assignments that Anthony told me about is that you guys have to search for journal articles. In particular, um, he had assigned journal articles for you to find. Uh, Two ways we can approach that. Um, you can always type in the title and click on app search and hope that it appears. But unfortunately, app search is really kind of more of a freshman tool. And let me explain how that works. We are a very Google centric society. I mean, we all generally it's our it's in our nature to go to Google first for everything. And even librarians are just as guilty. Google and Wikipedia are my two go to sites, even though I know that they're not academic. And, but we, of course, here at the library love Google Scholar because we know that you use it. So we want you to use it wisely and we'll teach you how. Um, but when you do a search using app search, it's a discovery tool. 
And this only searches seven to eight of the databases that we subscribe to. So think about that. You're only looking or getting information from seven to eight databases. If you click on article databases and e-research tools, you can see that we have a whole lot more than seven to eight. And the discovery tool is designed to just limit. So even though libraries offer it because it is a good go-to search, it's Google-centric, people will use it. When we teach at the graduate level, we try to get you to be more comfortable with using individual databases as opposed to doing a whole big massive search. But with that being said, you can do whole big massive searches within the individual databases as well. And I'll show you guys how to use that. So one thing that you did have a specific assignment for is looking for an article within a specific journal. And the best and easiest way to do that, and let me, um, here, let me just give you guys one screen to look at, is if you look under on the main library website, if you look under e-journal and magazine title, it's under find, and I'm also going to put this link in the chat box for you. You can actually search for specific journals using this page. So you can type in the name of the journal, you can type in um, titles, subject search, there's a couple of ways. Um, Anthony, I forgot the name of the journal that you specifically sent me, sorry, um, but I'm going to just show you how this works. So say you are looking for a magazine article out of a uh, billboard. So I'm going to click search. Okay, this tells me all of the locations of billboard at the library website. So if I'm looking for a specific year, you want to make sure that you click on the right link that has the year that you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and click on ProQuest Central. Okay, and this is going to let me browse specific issues. So you are literally looking at the electronic version of billboard magazine. So you can browse specific issues by year by month, by volume. So that is how you would find, oh, good good call, thank you. I will look for that one too. So this is how you would go and find that one specific journal with that one specific article if you're not having luck typing in the title using App Search. Um, let's see, Anthony was kind enough to supply me with Journal of Economic Perspectives. So you guys try this out. You're, you've got your browser open. Type this in. You know the one you're supposed to be looking for. So um, definitely follow along just so because it's always easier to learn by doing. Okay, so here we go. Journal of Economic Perspectives. Looks like we've got several locations where you can find it. So again, look for that specific date that's in your citation. And then choose your issue. So, like I said, A to Z is really cool. Oh, okay, good deal. You've got it all for me. Bless you. Okay, so 99. Okay, um, let's see, volume 13, issue 1. Okay, and the shaping of higher education. Boom, check it out. There it is. Um, What's awesome about this particular journal that Anthony has supplied for you is that you already have the full text. So, yay. But look over here, guys, on the toolbar on the right-hand side, you're going to see this button that says Cite. Please click on it. This is going to give you your citation. Copy and paste and put this in your works cited. Now, part of your assignment is that you guys are supposed to be looking for scholarly journals and creating a works cited. You are DE students. That means you are incredibly stressed. You have a lot more responsibility and a lot less time than our on-campus students here. So when you guys are doing research, you are taking time away from your family. You are taking possibly time away from your job. Any free time you have is gone because you're out to get a degree, which is the most wonderful thing that you could possibly do, and do for yourself. And that's wonderful, but you don't have a lot of time to do research. So I'm going to teach you guys some really cool tricks. But first and foremost, know that I'm here. And not just me. There are 65 librarians that work here, and we are all here to help you. Um, in fact, I probably should have gone over this in the beginning. The library is open seven days a week, 
We have various different times that we're open, but we are always have a professional librarian on staff or trained staff to help you with your research. So if you are writing your paper at 12 o'clock midnight, because it's the only time you have to sit down and do it, you can chat one of the librarians, you can call one of the librarians, we can walk you through whatever help that you need. So don't think because you're distance ed that, oh, okay, I'm gonna get all my information on my own. That's not true. You are absolutely not. Um, so when think about this when you guys are doing your research, now that I've gotten off my soapbox, um, go ahead and open up a Word document or a Pages document or whatever, or Google Doc or whatever it is that you like to use. Um, like I said, I'm a Mac snob, so I'm going to open up a Pages document. While I'm researching, while I am on the library website, I'm going to have this open. And so I'm going to call it Works Cited or Bibliography. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start copying and pasting my citations at the same time as I'm doing my research. Boom. I will go back later and put it in the proper APA format, but at least I have it. I've got this written. So this is one less thing you guys have to stress about when you are doing your research. So it's kind of a two for one. And when you use the library website, it's not just the articles that provide citations, but our databases have citations, our books, our ebooks, and I'll show you guys how that works too. Um, so like I said, we've got the APA citation. I'm gonna download the full text. Um, I might save it to my own personal folder that I've created within EBSCOhost, whatever works best for you. But now you've got the article, so you're ready to start reading it. You've got your work cited, so you're ready to start finishing that, and then you can start taking your notes. Now, What's cool about this is that say that you are working, this is the, the perfect definitive article that is going to be one of many that's going to describe your paper. When you guys use EBSCOhost or you use any of our databases, you're going to see this thing called subject terms. Now remember I showed you guys concept mapping and I told you to put your thesis statement in the middle and I told you to use other words that mean the same thing in terms of doing your research. When you're using the databases, you're going to see subject terms. And these are other words that you can plug in. Because even though we may have, um, like an example is, uh, we had a student that was doing environmental spatial studies in Johannesburg. Um, so we were looking up Johannesburg, environmental spatial studies, and we really weren't finding anything. So we were coming up with different ways to say spatial studies or different ways to say environment. We got some ideas using the subject terms, like what are other people calling it? And we were able to find more articles by rethinking and reshaping our thesis statement to use the words that are most popular. You know, um, I think in business term, we call them like hot words or something along those lines. And research is, is kind of similar. So what we're gonna do, now that you guys are kind of familiar with the citation and finding the articles is I want you guys to go ahead and go back to the beginning. And I want you to go to the article database and e-research tools link. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat box as well. Okay. What this does is this gives you a link to all of the databases that we subscribe to. And we break them down several ways. We break them down by name. So if you have a particular database that you are absolutely love. I was addicted to JSTOR when I was going to school. We also have them broken down by types. So for instance, you guys are working on projects where you need copyright free, um, royalty free images, music, or video. Don't risk going to Google and taking a Google image because you may be stealing. You could, and with, it's very, very sketchy to get stuff off the internet, especially within academics because a lot of schools have been sued because of using YouTube and for students and faculty just randomly taking video and not citing it and not giving credit for it. So what libraries do is we purchase databases that are royalty free, copyright free, safe under the educational umbrella of various free images, free videos, streaming videos, and uh, music. And this is what we've done, we've lumped them up by type. So again, if you were at the main article database and e-research tool page, click on images, music, and video, and you can get all of those things out of any one of these databases. So you can do a search 
for opera or PBS or popular music, or uh, maybe you just need images of certain American historical events, you can get it from using these databases. And just remember to cite everything. That's always very important. But just by clicking on one of the databases, and you guys are off campus, so it might prompt you for your banner ID. But see, you can um, you can break it down by, like I said, each database is different, but it does help you to kind of determine if you're looking for background music to play in a presentation. You can choose any one of these to put in there, and it will also give you the citation. So you're going to want to remember you always want to cite everything. Another one of the really great databases by types are statistics and data. And in education, you are all about statistics. You are all about data. Um, be very wary about what you use on the internet. Not that Google is evil, because it's not. We use it and we love it. Um, but you have to be very careful about sites like .com, .net, .org, because anybody can go online and create one of those sites. You can create a dot com site, you know, you could read Mike Smith's blog on auto mechanics and political science and think that this guy is amazing. He knows everything there is to know about political science. But what do you know about Mike Smith? You know, what is the credentials? What is, is he an expert in the field or is he just a diehard conspiracy theorist? When you're working with academic papers or when you're working in your future job and, and you're putting your name on something, on an idea, you have to know that your statistics and data is valid because whole careers have crashed and burned because of inaccurate information. So again, you don't have a lot of time to study. You don't have a lot of time to rifle through the 63 million Google hit page that you most likely will get trying to find the proper statistics and data for information. So use the library website. It's what you're paying for. And you know that it's legitimate. You know that it's expert. You know that it's scholarly, peer-reviewed. It's all of those magic words that your instructors are telling you to use. So you are literally taking a lot of that stress and pressure off when doing research. So just by looking at our list of statistics and data, data or databases, Appalachian has a lot of great stuff. We link to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Labor Statistics, um, Population Survey, Economics, all kinds of stuff. So it's a really nice one-stop shop in getting all of your statistics and data in one place. Also, we also check, we do lump up our databases by subject. So like I said, we have thousands and thousands of databases that we subscribe and pay for. So, you know, pick a subject, pick education. These are all of the databases that are for education. So when you are working on um, an education centric project, by clicking on one of these databases, you are just going to get journals and articles specific to education. So you don't have to worry about quantum physics throwing themselves in there unless, of course, that is your major as well. Um, so it is very specific. It is going to narrow your search. Now, what I highly recommend for those of you that are doing a Google type search is I want you guys to think about Academic Search Complete. And there's a couple ways you can get to this one. You can go by name, Academic Search Complete. So click on A. Um, you'll find that Academic Search Complete is pretty much listed in all of the subject lists because it is the big main um, database that, that covers all subjects. Okay, let me get rid of this here. Okay, so I am in Academic Search Complete. This should look very familiar to you guys because you've probably used this before. Now, before you start typing in your keywords, if you see this button right here that says Choose Databases, I want you guys to click that because that's going to open up all of these databases. So maybe you are doing a broad search. Maybe you are doing something along the lines of uh, quantum physics and education. In my case, I'll say I'm looking at anthropology and education. So I know I'm going to go ahead and click anthropology. Um, see anything else looks interesting. Or maybe I'm not quite sure where to go, so I'm just going to select all of them. And what this is going to do is this is going to search all of these databases. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, before I go any further, I want you guys to click underneath Advanced Search. Now, I know this is going against what you're used to. This is going against Google, but Google has that one line. I just want to type in that one line. Trust me on this. Click on Advanced Search when you're doing your research, because that is going to open up some more options for you.
And this is where you're going to put in those keywords that you created in your concept mapping. So, for instance, I'm going, uh, my work was actually, believe it or not, in cemeteries. It freaks my parents out, but yes, I used to work with a lot of um, dead people in my work. It was interesting, but um, I missed indoor plumbing and air conditioning, and there was always dirt in my food. So becoming a librarian just seemed like the most logical thing. So let's say that I am back in college, I'm writing my paper, so I've got my keywords, I'm writing my thesis about cemeteries in the South, um, so I've got three keywords, so I'm going to type in archaeology, and this is what I want you guys to do, is I want you to type in your keywords at the same time. Um, cemeteries, make sure you spell it right, okay, and I did work in Mississippi. Okay, and then I'm going to click search. What I love about EBSCOhost is that if you're like me and you can't spell, it will give you the spelling. Okay. So just typing in those three magic words, I actually, funny, I went from 1,000 or 144,927 articles about cemeteries. I added in my keyword. Then I went down to 1,045. Okay, I added another keyword because I'm trying to be as specific as possible. Thirty-two. So literally, I went from one word with 144,000, two words to 1,000, three words to 32. Thirty-two articles specifically about archaeology in Mississippi dealing with cemeteries. I'm telling you guys, those keywords are amazing. You can also add, if you've got more keywords you want to throw out there, you can add a row and do that. But what I want you all to focus on is on the left-hand side, you're going to see refine results. Now this is another way you can narrow your searches down. Maybe I want just full text. I, I want to just get the entire article. I don't want to just get that site. Um, Anthony asked to repeat that search. Um, what I did was I had my keyword searches. So we'll start with cemeteries. Okay. I had a lot of hits. I don't have time to look at 106,000, so I'm going to narrow my search down some more. I know that I'm going to write about Mississippi. Oh, okay, okay. All right, you guys need me to step back. Not a problem. Okay. Everybody on the main website. Okay. Article databases and e-research tools. Yes, good deal. Okay, A, academic search complete. Okay, I'm going to click on that. Okay, it's going to take me into EBSCOhost. Right at the top, I'm going to choose databases. So if you guys, y'all see that? Go ahead. Okay, good deal. And then um, you guys are going to click advanced search. So that your page will look like this. Okay, good. Okay. So is everybody cool? Are we all on? I think we got one, yeah, one or two are loading up, but they're following you. Okay. Okay, so again, this is where we're going to put our search. These are going to add where our, we're going to add our keywords. So when I just typed in cemeteries and did a search. Basically what it did was it pulled up all 144,927 articles that had the word cemeteries in it. Um, so that's where these extra keywords really come into play. So this is when you want to be more specific. So I did, I want to, to write about cemeteries in Mississippi. 
okay? Now that dropped my search down considerably. So there are 1,045 articles about there that are about cemeteries and Mississippi. But I need to focus more on archaeology because that's what this paper is going to be about. Okay, so that dropped my search down to 32. Now, I, I always use three words because I kind of think three is a magic number, but you have the option to add more rows and to add more keywords. So you can literally put as many keywords as you like. Also, if you were to look here on the left-hand side, you're going to see this and, and, and. These are Boolean searches, and basically what this does is this will help you limit um, if you are getting, okay, for a good example is uh, I had a student that was doing a paper on the Miami club scene in the 1980s. So I thought that was a really kind of specific. <laughs> I was, I, I literally said, you know, you should watch Miami Vice. I mean, that should tell you a little bit about it, you know, and, uh, but what he was getting was he was getting a lot of information about politics because he would type in um, social scenes and, and, for some reason, politics kept coming up and Democratic parties and Republican parties, and that's not what he was interested in. So he had typed in, you know, Miami, 1980s, not politics, and that weeded out all of the, the political stuff. So and, using and, and this also works when you're using that Google search. So let me, um, let me give you an example of that really quick. But by using and or not in your searches, you're limiting even more. So if I type in Mississippi and, and if you guys notice, I'm using Google Scholar from the Belk Library website. And that, that is, there's a reason behind that. Because we know that you use it. So what we've done was we have connected, um, yeah, make sure you guys spell because I'm a horrible speller, obviously. Um, what we've done is that we have connected all articles that we have in the library to Google Scholar. So that means if you guys were to go and just go to regular Google Scholar and type in the search, you'll, you may find an article or it may link you to an article or if you pay them $45, they'll send you the PDF. Don't do that. If you use Google Scholar, it will link. And if we have it, it'll automatically take you to it. But that's kind of a side benefit. But like I said, note the searches, the Boolean searches. This is what narrows your searches down. So if you are using Google or you are using Google Scholar, um, add those to your keyword searches just as if you did using EBSCOhost. <laughs> and you will limit your searches to what you need instead of those 63 million pages of what you don't need. Now, we do offer a, a better Google Scholar searches webinar. Um, I can tell you guys about that later if you're interested in, in learning on how to do it more efficiently. But just know that we love Google, too, and we'll make it even easier for you to use it. So again, what I've done was I've re refined my results to 32. 32 is definitely manageable. Um, but you can limit even further if you look on the refine results section on the left. You can limit to full text, and you guys know what um, full text is, right? It's the whole article? Yes. Okay. Anthony, you asked if that's when they're on campus only. No, this also works off campus, and when you use the Google Scholar tab off campus, it still works. Okay, okay. great. Thanks. Um, so you can limit your search to full text, um, or you just need scholarly peer-reviewed journals. You can limit that. That knocked me down to six. You can even limit to publication dates. You can kind of play around. Maybe I just want the last 20 years as opposed to the last 100 years. And that will kind of lower your searches down too. So check it out. I have five articles that are scholarly peer reviewed that are about exactly what it is I'm about to write. And because it's EBSCOhost, because I got it from the library, I can click on citation. I can get that citation. I can copy and paste it. Put it into my work cited, and I can download the PDF full text, or I can email it to myself, or I can save it into the folder to go and, and read it later. And it's given me some new subject terms to think about in case that's not enough articles for me to find.
How are you guys doing? Are you finding what you're looking for? Is this helping? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any questions that you all are having that you may need help with for your assignment? Hang on, we've got one incoming. Say that again. She was wanting another example of filtering in Google Scholar. You got it. Okay. So we'll go back to the main website. And again, you guys, if you if you want to use Google Scholar, always go to Google Scholar through Belk Library and Information Commons. Just go to our website, bookmark it, make it your Google Scholar bookmark because if you try to do this search outside of it, it won't link to the articles that we already have. So for example, um, let's try something different. Um, education. I had this question today. Okay. So I can click on the link, now like I said, keep an eye on the right hand side because if you see this PDF, PDF, that means that we have a copy here in the library, you can access it directly. If you don't, uh, some of them, okay, yeah, we did have that one, sorry. Um, say that you really want this article, but it doesn't look like we have the PDF or it's asking you for money. What I want you guys to do is I want you to go back to the main Belk Library website and I want you to click this interlibrary loan link. Have you guys used interlibrary loan before? Most of them are saying no. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Well, here, click on this link. Interlibrary loan, Iliad. We have access to thousands of libraries and 160 different countries just based on this interlibrary loan account. And what this means is that we can contact any one of those thousands of libraries to get a book or an article that you need. Now, I will tell you, it will take anywhere from 24 hours to a week, depending on what the item is that you need, because we are getting it from wherever. Um, generally, the interlibrary loan librarian will try to um, to get the book or the article from as local as possible. But I will tell you, in my own experience, I requested an article from the University of Georgia and the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I got the article from Alaska before I got the article from Georgia. So. Um, Close, close proximity is not necessarily an indication of how quickly you would get the item. But if you are a first time a user, go ahead and click and go ahead and fill out this account. Now you don't have to do this right now. You can make a link to do it later. But what you're gonna do is you are setting yourself up to get all of your free books and free articles. And because you're distance education students, we mail these to your house for free. Um, whereas campus students, we make them walk clear across in the snow uphill <laughs> to get their stuff from the library. For you guys, we'll mail it to you. And you get a prepaid envelope or box, depending on how many items you ordered, and we'll send them back. You can send them back to us free of charge. This also includes books, articles that we have here at Belk Library. It also includes books and articles from UNCA and from Western Carolina. And even better yet, if you want to take a break over the Christmas holiday and watch all Breaking Bad, you can have those mailed to your house every single season. And, you know, please find something happy to read when you're done doing all that. But we send DVDs as well. So just keep that in mind. Now, I have a username and account, and I have requested stuff in the past, so I can show you how it looks. But yeah, you'd be impressed in our DVD collection. It's pretty crazy. So it's pretty simple. You can choose an article, a book, or a thesis, because we don't actually have a database of thesis, but you can get copies of master's thesis for free um, in your particular major. So if you want to see when you guys are writing yours in the future, hopefully distant future, so you don't have to worry about it now, um, you, when you start working on that lit review, you can get copies of thesis this way. And again, they are free of charge. But you do want to have enough time to do your research. Don't be like me and wait to the last minute. Um, get as much done as you can. And I have put my email down there too, so you guys feel free to email me as many times a day, as many times a week, 
as you need. And um, let me help you get your stuff done because that's why I'm here. So again, you're going to want to put in as much information as you can. The title, um, not wanted after the date. You don't have to fill out all this other stuff. Just put the start stuff. And then what you'll do is um, you can, it's not like where you put in a request via email and you just hope that somebody picks it up because it disappears off into the atmosphere and then you never hear from them again. You can actually follow along by logging into the site. If you're like me, OCD, you want to look at it daily, um, you can see your transaction. You can view it. You can see where the status is. So here's all the information I put in. Here's when I submitted it. Here's where um, it was processing. Here's where Diana put in the sent. Here's or the request. Here's telling me that they got it. Now they're processing it. Now they're sending it to Diana who's sending it to me. And now I just got it. So it's really cool because you can watch the process go and you know exactly where your request is and when it's going to come in. Don't ever buy books off Amazon. Don't ever spend hard earned money on articles because the school will take care of it for you. Just be patient. Give us that notice ahead of time because if it's something you need yesterday it probably is not going to happen but if you give us enough time we can make sure that you get the stuff that you need without having to pay for it textbooks too well textbooks are funny um generally we don't purchase textbooks because of the bookstore um but if they are primary materials in some classes we do have a few textbooks in the collection but uh, i can't guarantee that So again, if you guys have any questions about interlibrary loan in the future, um, either review this archive or just send me an email and I'll walk you through it. it. I love it. I use it a lot. But that's how you can get those articles that you just have the citation for some reason you can't get the full text for or you found it on Google Scholar and it's linking you to a page where you have to pay for it or you need a thesis, or you need a dissertation, or maybe you just want to see what yours looks like. Um, maybe your kid can't sleep at night. I highly recommend you read them mine. <laughs> it is the most boring site or uh, thesis you will ever read. Um, but that is how you would go ahead and request those. So any questions about that? Awesome. No, they, they, I'm getting a lot of awesomes. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Is this helping you at all? Are you thinking, oh gosh, this is more work? I mean, open the lock. Okay. Open the lock. Yay. Okay. Well, we're not done. Okay. Good. Um, books and media. I told you guys about the DVDs. Just for fun, click on movies and DVDs. Okay. As you can see, um, just by typing in titles, you'll think, oh wow, we got a lot of foreign language and stuff. That's that's interesting. Um, but we have some really great. Oh my gosh, our TV show collection is to die for. We we get Game of Thrones and we all fight over who gets to watch it first. And um, we get um, all the new movies as they come out. Uh, so it's it's pretty fun. Like I said, you could literally binge on, on Dexter or Breaking Bad over the break. And again, because you're DE students, it can all be sent to you. So you can just click on feature films and scroll down. You can search by title. Now, this is how you can request to have this book sent to you or this movie sent to you. So um, I will say, and I know it's totally not academic, Anthony, I'm sorry, but even DE students. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. So um, yeah, there's apparently even critical essays about it, but okay. I want the complete second season sent to my house. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on the title. Okay. Um, don't forget, I got the site, this title. Woo! If I need the APA citation for this to put in my paper, I can do that. <laughs> but I'm going to click request because I want this. I want this like today. So it's going to request. You're going to get this page right here, and if you notice, you're going to get this page too, even if you're on campus. So you're going to put in your name and your banner ID. So if you don't know your banner ID. Email your advisor, ASAP. Elizabeth, what is the lim number limit for having books, articles, and DVDs? Students can check up to 99 items. So that's a lot of mail. <laughs> that's a long break to watch over, too. That's the summer. 
Okay, so it says I am logged in. Um, I'm going to choose my pickup location because you guys are DE students. I'm going to click ASU Distance Learning Doctoral. Whatever address that is on file at Banner in your Banner system is going to be the address that it gets sent to. So make sure that it is the correct address. And then you click Submit, and that's it. It takes, you know, like I said, it takes anywhere from 24 hours to a week, depending on, on the item. If it's an item that we own, it generally just takes a couple of days. It's however long it takes the Postal Service to get out to your house. But that's exactly how you can request items. So you can do a search of books. You can do a search of DVDs. Um, it works the same with books and media. Um, American Education. Okay, say that this book looks awesome. This is the one I want. I can click on it. Um, let me give you the patron view instead of the library and review. Okay, I'm going to request this to be mailed to me as well. You can also do add to bag if you know you're going to, it's kind of like Amazon shopping. If you know you're going to have a, more than one, you can add all of these items to the bag. So you can have all five or six things that you want in the one area and it gets sent out. Or you can just drive Greg, who's our interlibrary loan librarian, and don't tell him I said to do this. But you can just do one request at a time. It drives me nuts. Especially if it's all going to the same place. But he's a nice guy, so don't give him more work. But then you'll just click request, like I said, choose your location. So you're going to put ASU, distance learning, because that's you, and they'll know to send it automatically to your address. Now, Philip asked, how do you return these items once you're finished with them? It's a great question. You're going to have a prepaid envelope that will have all of the information already on it. So you're going to slap that stuff back in that envelope or that box, put that sticker on, take it to the post office. It doesn't cost you a thing. So it's free and we supply all of that stuff for you. Now, if you lose it, that's another story, but we won't go down that road. <laughs> all right. So again, like I showed you with the books and media, something else I wanted to show you as far as how to request that stuff. Now, I showed you guys American Education. We thought, yeah, that's the book for me. I'm definitely going to um, get that one and send it to my house. But if you look, Right here at this blue button, click on this. You're going to see this blue button after every book and after every ebook. And then you want to go ahead and copy and paste that citation in your works cited. So you, that will just appear on just about every page, every search that you do using the library website, that, that citation link. And it does save you a lot of time. But again, what's cool? It gives you the location of where the book is. It tells you what it's about, gives you a summary. Some people even write reviews, and some of the reviews are funny because, of course, it's those nerdy librarians that are reading these and writing reviews about it. Um, and you can add it to your list for future stuff. You can add it to your bag to be sent to you. You can. Uh, there's, like, a lot of different ways that you can kind of play with this. Well, we have this nearby on shelf, and what's cool with this is that it literally, literally tells you what books are sitting right next to it. And this is very important because the Belk Library, we use Library of Congress as our classification system as opposed to Dewey Decimal. And Library of Congress is very subject specific. So all of the education books are lumped up into the same area. So if you are looking for a very specific topic, such as American education, you can click nearby on self and it will tell you all of the other books that are next to it that you may think, hmm, I might need to look at that one too. Maybe I should have that one sent. And it also does it by year. So if you need the most recent information, you could probably skip the 1967 and the 1962. So maybe I'm into that chronology, chronology of education in the United States. Again, okay, I like it. Here's the citation. So I'm going to copy and paste that site because I'll probably use it. And then I'm going to request that that be sent to me as well. So it's kind of a shopping, it's, it's kind of a one-stop shop for research. And because you guys are DE students, it gets sent to your house like Amazon. Um, the only thing we don't do is gift wrap. And that may come in the future, you just never know. <laughs> <laughs> so any questions about citing books or requesting books or having books sent to your house? Because there is one more thing I wanna show you about eBooks. Hang on. Like, I've had issues in the past where I copy-paste the site from somewhere, and it's not necessarily a good record 
Yeah, she was asking about do they need to double check the siding and and I'll go ahead and answer that and say absolutely yes. Yes, in fact, I think she should just get an A period because that is the perfect question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> double check on siding because as cool as this feature is, they do make mistakes. So you always want to double check. Because, for example, on that American Higher Ed book, it didn't have the city and state and publisher. That's right. There. That's right. That's an example of where you would need to, to be careful. And trust me, too, when you guys are doing these citations, you're going to start seeing some look good and some don't look good. And, and you know, it's like, hmm. It, so you start to become very familiar with it. It's very much like learning a language. You, you get the gist of what APA should look like and how MLA looks like and Chicago Turabian. I don't think you ever want to be in that nerd-centric universe that librarians are because we can spot at a glance, which is good and which is not good. But when it comes to your paper, yes, you definitely want to. And here's a little trick that I highly recommend you guys do. The University Writing Center, which we have a link to on the library website, will review your citations and they will review your papers for you. They will edit them and they will um, give you a lot of great advice before submitting, say, your, your main paper to Anthony. It's a free service. You email them. You send them your paper. Um, they want at least a week's notice, so don't give them the night before. But they will heavily edit and give you advice and criticism on your paper before you even turn it into your professor. And it is a free resource. So definitely take advantage of that one as well when you're writing your papers and when you're writing your thesis because they can save you a lot of time. And they can help you pick up those little um, discrepancies that do appear. Very good advice. I agree. Okay. okay, that that seems to be the last question, so feel free to, to move to the next one. All right. Okay, so when we were looking at books and media, I happened to choose a physical book that we have here in the library. But we also have over 90,000 ebooks. And ebooks are interesting because we have several different vendors that supply them, and they all have several different um, apps and username and passwords and all of these different ways to download the ebooks. But what they all share in common is that you can view the ebook directly on your computer without having to download it. So here I'm looking at um, a search for American education. And if you look on the left-hand side, you're going to see icons that are going to tell you if it's a book, if it's a DVD. This one's an internet resource, so that means that's a, um, a database. Book, book, book. Streaming video. Okay, that's cool. All right, but here's an ebook. So I'm going to want to see, I'm going to go ahead and, and check out this ebook. You can click on the title. And it will give you all of the information, so it'll give you the break down the contents, um, the authors, uh, all of that information. But if you want to view the ebook, what you're going to do is you're going to click full text online. And what that does is that has opened the ebook onto your computer. So you've got the, all the table of contents. You've got that very, very important citation button right here that you can click on. You can download this ebook offline. And I will tell you, if you want to download ebooks, please schedule a wrap session. And I'll tell you what a wrap session is because it, depending on where your ebook is coming from, there is a couple of different ways you have to set up your computer. But I will tell you, once you set up your computer once, you will never have to set it up again. So, uh, but it is a process. But if you just, if you just want to, okay, here's my great analogy. You're at the library, you see this book, you pick it up off the shelf, you're flipping through it, you haven't decided whether or not you're going to check it out. Click on ebook full text, because that's what you're doing. You're just kind of looking at it. You're holding it in your hands, you're flipping through it. Oh, nice cover. Okay, that looks cool. I don't know who those people are. Um, all right, here's table of contents. Yeah, I think this will be good. I think I can use this. Um, you can either read it directly online or you can click download this ebook. And that's when you guys come talk to me or you schedule a wrap session. We'll log you in through the next couple of steps. You can download that ebook onto your iPad, onto your phone, onto your computer, and you can have it for up to 21 days. After 21 days, the book will disappear. Or, like I said, you can just view it directly and get all the information that you need out of it. Now, some of these books you can print up to 10 to 15 pages, but you can't print the whole book. 
You can make notes as you're reading. Um, it does have a little note option and it does also have the citation option as well. So the ebooks are really cool. As long as you have a wireless connection, you're able to access it. Kelly, I have a question. Sure. Uh, on the notes section, does that follow the computer or your yeah. login? Uh, you will want to be logged in. So if you guys are using EBSCOhost or any site that looks like this, you'll see the sign in button at the top. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is you're going to create a new account. So you would click on create a new account. You would fill out this information. And what I tell students is to use your App State email and your App State password. So that's one less username and password that you have to remember. And then once you're logged in as yourself, let me see if I, I can remember mine. Okay, so yay, I'm logged in as me. Okay, so now I can make notes and all of my notes will be saved in my account. So then no matter what computer you use, once you log back in, those notes will be saved. That's correct. And anything that you save in your folders will be there. So any articles that you've saved in past researching, um, like I, I've got a couple of articles here, a couple of folders here that I've created. You might have a folder for each class you take or for each project you're working on. Everything will be saved no matter what computer you use. That's correct. Okay. Is, that, is that including ebooks saved? Uh, that section saved notes. Well, your what happens with the ebooks, and again, it depends. With EBSCOhost, what you do is you have an EBSCOhost account, you have an Adobe Digital Editions account, and then you download Adobe Digital Reader onto your computer. Now, Adobe Digital Reader is a software that downloads and it opens up the ebooks much like Kindle works. Um, Blue Fire app is another if you're using your iPad or your phone. You would need an EBSCOhost account, an Adobe account, and then you would need to download the Bluefire app. So you can see where it gets complicated when you want to download the eBooks, but you can just open them without all of that when you're on the website. But once you have downloaded them onto your um, computer, then you have them when you're when there is no wireless. It's just like reading on your Kindle or reading on your iPad. Um, what if you want to? Uh... Like just print a section of it, a chapter, can you print? Um, it does vary. Um, we have a really good guide. Let me show you that, and I'm going to put the link in, about our eBooks, where it tells you, it, he, John Boyd created a chart, and in the chart, it tells you exactly how many days, how it works, because like I said, each, all of the eBooks come from different vendors, so this here will tell you, you can check out is 21 days. You can print up to 60 pages. If you get your books from eBrary, you've got check out for 17 to 14 days. You can print out anywhere from 10 to 60 pages. So bookmark this. Go ahead. What was your question? It's kind of like the Kindle, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and like I said, it's like, it is, it is complicated. But once you have it downloaded, once you've kind of taken the 10 minutes with the librarian to make sure that everything's working, it's worth it because then it will always work. And it's this is not the fault of the librarians. I feel I should put that disclaimer out there. This is the publishers. This is all the publishers. They want to make it as complicated as possible. But it also tells you what downloadable compatible devices the books can be downloaded on as well. So that's a really good indication right there to let you know. Um, they will always work on your computer, but they may not necessarily work on your Kindle. And some will work on your Kindle while others don't. Some will work on your iPad. Some others don't. So this chart's really good because it does break it down. Great. Thank you. Sure. But... You know, to, to make your life just a little easier, um, you can, like I said, just open them directly on your computer, make your notes, make sure you're signed in, and you'll always have them. So, um, looks like we've talked for about an hour. What questions do you have for me? I have thrown a lot of information out at you. Is this good uh, for getting you 
started on being able to do searches. Uh, okay. Great. No, and everybody's nodding that this has been very, very helpful. Well, I'm going to give you guys one more link. This is the wrap session I was talking to you about. If you want to go through all of this again, just yourself and another librarian, um, please fill this out and put in as much information as you can. In fact, do this every class you take because there are different amount of information that's out there that we can help you with. Whereas, like I said, there's over 65 librarians. We, we do, gosh, I think last year I did, how many did I do last year personally? 50, we've had some people that did 140. But this is like one-on-one, -on -one, you and the librarian talking about your research. Maybe you haven't researched in 10 years. Maybe you just got out of high school and all you're used to using is Google and you wanna know what's out there. We have so many really cool databases like Ancestry.com and Mango Languages. That's a free resource for you to use and you want to learn how to use them. Maybe you want you got a lot of information out of the webinar tonight, but you're still kind of confused and need some clarification. You can put that in that request and you can have as many wrap sessions as you want, as long as you're a student here. So this is your chance to get as much personal help as you need. And um, please don't hesitate to ask, and don't hesitate to ask more than once. I'll put in a, in a plug for it as well, because I've had a number, quite a few students um, do RAP sessions, and they've been tremendously helpful. In fact, on someone, a student and I are working, co-authoring a paper together, and much of our uh, research was aided by a RAP session. Oh yeah, yeah. We live for these too, you guys. We fight over these. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but we can do we can do in person. We can do phone, and we can do web conferencing. And what's cool about using GoToWebinar is that we can share each other's screens, um, so we can watch how you're researching. We can add to your desktop. You can give us permission to type in on your desktop. So it is very word. It is very kind of face to face and hands on. So you're not just okay click here do you see this you know it's not like that it's it's more interactive and that's what we like about this system what are the hours what are the hours that um, it generally happens it gives you um the option here you can choose your hours so it's 9 a.m to 7 30. and you can choose the date and times that work best for you <laughs>